um, yeah, so let's start uh, again. Welcome back. So our next uh, speaker is Baptiste Royer, and uh, he is my colleague at Yale. Um, and he speaks about autonomous stabilization of finite energy, Gottsman, Kitev, Preskill, Bosonic uh, codes, and excited to hear more. Um, okay, so thanks, uh, Krista, for the introduction, and it's a pleasure to be talking at the 2020 edition of the BBQ. Um, today, I'm going to present work uh, done in collaboration with uh, Shwala, who's a graduate student uh, here at Yale, and uh, Steve Gurdon, uh, my uh, advisor. And yeah, I want to acknowledge uh, helpful conversations with uh, many people. Um, yeah, so I imagine that by now everybody has some idea of what's going on with the GPP code, but uh, I'll go uh, through it, remind everyone uh, what's going on. So quadratures in phase space uh, do not commute, and one consequence of that is that displacement in phase space in general do not commute uh, either. And if one traces a path in phase space and come back to the origin, then the phase acquired will be proportional to the covered area. That means that in general, displacements do not commute, except in the special case where the covered area is a multiple of 2 pi. And so one way to define the GKP code is uh, through stabilizers, which are the displacement by uh, where the area covered by the two uh, stabilizers is uh, 4 pi. So the Eisenberg uncertainty principle tells us that we should have an area of 2 pi per state in phase space. And since we are, want to encode a qubit, we want to encode two states, so we need an area of uh, four pi. So make me, let's go and look closer at these two translation operators. So the first one here, Tx, is a function of x, and so its eigenstate will be uh, eigenstate of the x operator, so infinitely, infinitely squeezed state in x. And if we want the plus one eigenspace, well, it will be all x uh, eigenstate at multiple of integer multiple of square root of pi. Similarly for p, it's a function of the p uh, quadrature. And so its eigenstate will be p eigenstate, so infinitely squeeze state uh, in p at all integer multiple of square root of pi. And so uh, the code space will be the um, simultaneous plus one eigenspace of these two stabilizers. So it will be the intersection of all the lines uh, here. And so it will live on the uh, grid at all multiples of uh, square root of pi. We can define the logical, uh, we usually define the logical basis as the following. So we define the zero logical code words as all even multiple of square root of pi in position. And uh, the one <coughs> logical code words as all odd multiple uh, of square root of pi. Here it's clear that the x logical, oper logical operator, which exchange zero and one, is just a displacement by uh, square root of pi in x. And one can compute that the C operator is a displacement in the other uh, direction. OK, so how do we correct errors uh, in the GKP code? Well, we can, um, an example, uh, draw here the standard measurement-based approach uh, to correct errors in X. So here we can imagine that we have small displacement errors. And uh, we uh, draw bins along each uh, peak. And we measure the position uh, of the state within that bin. And that is equivalent to measuring the stabilizer or this x modulo uh, square root of pi. And so for example, if I measure the value here, then I know that to correct, I need to uh, perform the reversed displacement. And as long as the displacement um, the error uh, was smaller than uh, square root of pi over two. So as long as the error keeps me within the shaded bins and I can exactly recover uh, the state. A second approach to error correction, which has been um, applied to other bosonic codes such as gas states or um, binomial codes is the dissipation engineering approach. In that approach, instead of measuring and then correcting, the goal is to engineer a, a flow in phase space that autonomously brings um, any state back to the code space. And so, for example, in this situation, this would be um, illustrated by the green arrows, which uh, direct all states towards uh, the center uh, of the bit. Um, in particular, yeah, okay, so this is for the ideal case, um, but 
as we know, we need to have finite energy to be realistic. And in particular, I want to point out one uh, issue with the approach on the left, that even if uh, you give me a device that can exactly measure the stabilizer, after measuring the stabilizer, uh, well, I will project onto its eigenstate. But we know that the eigenstates of that stabilizer are infinitely squeezed state that have infinite energy. And so measuring exactly the stabilizer adds um, a lot of energy in the system. So in practice, any measurement device has finite precision, so the amount of energy is uh, finite. But still, it underlies that this approach does not take into account the amount of energy contained in the GKP code. And um, especially in microwave resonators or uh, motional modes of trapped ions, we want to have a good control of how much energy we put in. Because if there's too many photons or too many uh, phonons, then bad things can happen. For example, uh, nonlinearities can uh, kick in. Um, yeah. So what I want to describe is an approach uh, to GKP, which really takes into account uh, the envelope, the, well, the, the finite energy -ness. Uh, for that, so I'm going to start by describing uh, these finite energy GKP states. So the usual way they are defined is from the ideal state to which we apply a uh, envelope operator, which reduces the uh, amplitude of states that are far from the origin in phase space. And we define the zero and one logical of the uh, finite energy code uh, that way. One consequence of this is that the code words, instead of being infinitely sharp peaks, they acquire some finite width delta. And the width of the envelope is uh, 1 over delta. And it's clear that in the limit that delta goes to 0 here, we recover the ideal code. Um, and here, <clears throat> one, uh, one thing is that here, this, uh, these finite states are not exactly plus 1 eigenstate of the ideal stabilizer. For example, we can imagine. Uh, doing a translation of uh, the state on the left. And although the grid will be uh, preserved by a translation by one lattice constant, the whole envelope will not be preserved. It will be uh, shifted. So uh, to take this into account, what we uh, use is uh, we introduce is these finite energy stabilizers, which we define the following way, uh, through a similarity transformation of the ideal stabilizer in the middle. So some quick algebra, and it's uh, clear that uh, the finite energy states defined uh, on top are exact plus one eigenstates of uh, that operator. And also we can compute that uh, we can define the stabilizers and the logical operators with the same similarity transformation. And it's clear that all commutation relations are still preserved. This object we can compute uh, exactly. And it turns out uh, that it's uh, this uh, function. And in this talk, I'll just take a small delta expansion such that things are nicer to look at. But everything can be carried out exactly. So if I rewrite that operator and pull out a delta, we see this x plus uh, ip um, in the exponential. And this is exactly a squeezed a operator. That means that. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so this finite energy uh, stabilizer is a function of the squeezed annihilation operator. And so its eigenstate will also be eigenstates of the squeezed annihilation operator, which are just displaced uh, squeeze state. Particularly here, we can uh, draw all plus one eigenstates of the finite energy stabilizer, and it's uh, all these uh, squeeze states here. And so this really draw the parallel, it makes a stronger connection between finite energy GKP states and squeeze states, something that was known before, but here uh, it's very clear. And so now that we're uh, equipped with this finite energy stabilizer, we want to perform error correction. And this is a strange piece. It's a strange operator. It's neither unitary nor Hermitian. Uh, it has an imaginary and a real part. As we can see from the, there's an i and there's a i times i. So there's a real and imaginary part to that uh, operator. So instead of measuring and then uh, correcting, uh, then the approach we take here is a dissipation engineering uh, based approach, well, based on that operator. So we take that operator, for example, 
we take its uh, logarithm and we obtain uh, this thing, which looks like the squeezed A, but now there's a modular, uh, there's a small m modular approach that appears because of the uh, multi-valued of the logarithm. And if we plug that uh, operator inside the dissipator, then this will naturally bring the uh, any state back to the, the code space. So for example, if I look closer at what's the effect of that dissipator in phase space, and I draw a classical uh, vector map for the, the, the flow in phase space, I get the plot on the right. And uh, you get two things. So the P part brings the state back to zero in P with no modularity. And the X modular part tries to bring the state back to uh, zero modulo square root of pi. And that's here you can see that the flow uh, goes to the middle at each multiple of uh, square root of pi. And now if you imagine that um, states and phase pairs are kind of an incompressible fluid, you can see why this flow would uh, directly stabilize um, squeezed, uh, squeezed Korean states, squeezed, displaced squeezed states. And so for fun, uh, I coded uh, this uh, little master equation in uh, Q-tip. I input vacuum and I looked at uh, what's the evolution of the Wigner function. And uh, I'm going to move it at place here. And we see that we exactly, um, we start from vacuum and then we go to the uh, GKP code with the grid clearly appearing. And then it stabilizes at a finite size uh, afterwards. And so this master equation really stabilizes the GKP uh, manifold. So <clears throat> this is nice. This now gives us an objective of what to attain of how to both correct errors for GKP and at the same time, control the amount of energy inside um, the, the, the oscillator. However, um, while it seems challenging to implement that uh, dissipator, the thing inside is a complicated operator. So instead of that implementing it directly, what we aim to do is to uh, discretize it and do an approximation of the um, uh, an evolution generated by this master equation using a qubit. So in practice, what we have in mind is uh, you have a high Q mode where we want to encode the GKP and we'll use a qubit to control that IQ mode. Particular will make use a, of a um, one operation, the control displacement, which you've heard about uh, this morning from Alec and uh, Steve Stock. And the effect of that operator is to uh, displace the uh, oscillator by plus beta over two if the qubit is in G and minus beta over two if the qubit is in E. And here, the way to think about this engineer dissipation is really the qubit acting as a Maxwell, as Maxwell demon, which will come and extract one bit of entropy at a time in exactly the right way, such as to stabilize the uh, code space. Okay, so our goal is to make this uh, dissipator. And uh, maybe this is a bit complicated, so I'll go in uh, steps where the generalization should be uh, clear fully. So I'll start by describing how we can stabilize vacuum using qubit and then squeeze vacuum and then what we want, which is modular squeeze vacuum. So how to stabilize vacuum? So uh, this is not so complicated. For example, if you have a microwave cavity, you just plug some transmission line at zero temperature and naturally uh, you'll stabilize vacuum. All the energy will leave through the transmission line. In the Markovian limit, you can describe this situation by uh, this James Cummings Hamiltonian, where the uh, harmonic oscillator exchange excitations between uh, with, the, the, with the bat. So the first step is to consider a discretization of this model, where instead of a continuous field, we take a uh, discretization of the bat over small uh, slices of time delta t. And now, instead of having a continuous field, we can imagine a conveyor belt of modes interacting for some small time delta t and then going away. And in that small time delta t, uh, the interaction Hamiltonian is really uh, just a beam straighter Hamiltonian. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is now a discrete model and we want qubit. So how to map this to qubit? Well, if we make delta t uh, small enough, then the number of excitation transferred from A to B in a small time set will be on average much smaller than one. And so in this limit, there's no difference between a qubit and a oscillator. 
And so we can just replace these oscillator mode by qubits and the annihilation uh, operator by uh, the qubit uh, sigma minus uh, operator. And so we now have a qubit model which autonomously stabilizes uh, vacuum. The final step is to realize that actually we don't need multiple qubits, we need a single one because we're not using all the qubits that carry away the information. So what we can do is just reset the qubit with any step and use the same qubit. And here, for example, we can have our mode uh, psi of the oscillator. We can put a qubit in G. Uh, we perform this unitary and then um, reset the qubit afterwards. And then autonomously, this will stabilize this vacuum, which is the zero eigenspace of A or the zero eigenspace of this X plus IP. So now we've done a lot uh, of work for something that's not so interesting, stabilizing vacuum, but we're in a position where we can easily generalize this to more complicated and interesting situations. For example, uh, yeah, okay. And so this situation is a bit like Maxwell's demand. So either you need a large scratch pad to write all your information. So you need a lot of qubits or you can perform work to erase the information. And that's uh, here performed by the reset information, which erase the entropy from the qubit. Um, yeah, okay, so if we generalize now to more interesting situation, for example, we want to stabilize squeeze vacuum, then here we want to stabilize the zero eigenspace of uh, X plus IP, but with the quadrature scale by uh, one over delta and delta respect respectively. And so we just replace that operator here and that uh, repeatedly applying this circuit autonomously stabilizes squeeze vacuum. And in fact, this has been done uh, in Jonathan's group. Um, in top time. And now uh, we do the final step and we replace, we want to stabilize this modular squeeze vacuum. So we replace this X by this X modular and repeatedly applying this uh, interaction will autonomously stabilize the plus one eigenspace of one of the uh, GKP code stabilizer. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so now there's um, one thing complicated is that we want we need to couple to one modular quadrature and one standard quadrature. So the standard quadrature, um, well, it's you can imagine how to generate this coupling. This part is more difficult. And so what we came up with is different ways to um, decompose this interaction by decomposing it in a different parts. And depending on the order in which you take this decomposition, then you get you get uh, different schemes. Um, so, for example, if you just take a first order decomposition uh, e to the a plus b e to the a e to the b, then you get this uh, sharp and trim protocol, which was realized by the, the, the year group. So, Alec, what you heard uh, this morning from Alec. Um, so, this is an autonomous version, but uh, what they implemented was actually a feedback based, where instead of doing a controlled displacement and then reset. They measured the qubit and then did a controlled uh, feedback. But from a circuit level point of view, these two versions are completely equivalent. Um, yes, but so this is the first order scheme, but you can take a second order uh, approximation to this unitary. And you, depending on the order of uh, decomposition, you get big the, what we call the big, small, big protocol, where you do one large control displacement, a small one and a large one are the small, big, small, where it's small, big, small. But um, the common point of these three protocols, if, if you uh, apply them repeatedly, then you approximate the evolution uh, generated by this dissipator. And so naturally, you extract uh, errors from the system and you stabilize the code space. And so <clears throat> the next step was to see, well, how good do these uh, protocols work in practice? And, and so, uh, we tried this. And, and so <clears throat> here, what we did is to uh, apply this qubit, the, the stabilization uh, step. Then for some small time uh, delta t, we let the system evolve under photon loss. And then we apply uh, other stabilizations, so on and so forth. And here it's uh, uh, one full round is con con has two steps to stabilize both uh, for the circuit for the x and p. Um, stabilizers. And so what we uh, compute is we look at the decay of the logical information and so we can extract the channel infinity as a function of photon loss right here. 
in red is just the uh, bare encoding, so the fuck encoding without any error correction. And the three uh, curves here are for the uh, three protocols, the first order sharpened train protocol, and the two big small being and uh, small big small. And <clears throat> so we see that for all three protocols, uh, at least for this uh, number of photons, there's a possibility of really uh, gaining a lot. So that's uh, good news. And these higher order scheme, we see that the small big small uh, has the, the, the same breaking point, but since it's higher, um, uh, it's a higher order scheme, it has a larger uh, slope here and we can get better results with the small big small than the sharp entry. Can get even better results with the big small big, and which has a lar uh, bigger uh, break even point. And, and this bigger uh, break even point is because the, the, the correction rate is actually bigger in the big small big. It uh, saturates here, uh, here on the bottom, and that's because of uh, issues related of the qubit approximations. Basically, we're not stabilizing really a Gaussian, we're stabilizing a cosine uh, because. Uh, yeah, the qubit is um, modular in both quadrature. And so what we stabilize is actually a large cosine and we can tunnel to other uh, wells of this large cosine. And this is why it uh, um, saturates here. But yeah, we understand what's going on here. So this is um, encouraging. So we looked at how the system uh, behaves under, now if we consider ancilla uh, decay or ancilla uh, decoherence. So the first thing we plotted was uh, the effect of ancilla defacing. And now the red dotted, red, uh, dashed dotted line is um, the channel fidelity of the system if we encode information in the ancilla and not the oscillator. And for the three protocols, we see that there's a very, very good uh, prediction against ancilla defacing. The reason for this is that uh, ancilla phase error commutes with the control displacement. And if you analyze the whole system, um, all phase errors uh, can at most create an error of either one lattice constant or a small epsilon. And so uh, phase errors can always be corrected. And so this scheme is naturally very robust to ancilla uh, defacing. The um, other thing uh, that we looked at is ancilla decay. And now the situation is a bit uh, less good. Um, so if we look now, um, there's a linear relation between the uh, ancilla decay rate and the channel infidelity. Notice the change in scale here, it's linear, linear scale. Um, the reason for this is that uh, if there's a decay even during the large control displacement, this can lead to a large uh, displacement error, which cannot be uh, corrected. So basically during the large control displacement, if there's a qubit decay event, then there's a 50% chance that this uh, decay error causes a logical error in the GKP. And that's what you see here. It doesn't depend on the protocol. Uh, yeah, if you scale this uh, on the time of the control displacement. Um, yeah, so finally to conclude, uh, we've come up with new protocols to stabilize the uh, GKP code. So these protocols directly take into account the finite energy nature of the GKP, uh, 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 the finite energy nature of the code. So that can really get large improvement in lifetime uh, against oscillator errors. Uh, this protocol is autonomous, so there's no need for measurement at any time. All you need to do is qubit reset. And maybe I can explain the, the pictures uh, that go from the left here on the right. It's one trajectory if I perform four steps of the protocol and we see uh, slowly the GKP uh, appearing and the new function. So uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Baptiste, for this nice uh, summary. Um, please, everyone, uh, type your questions in the chat if you have some. We have some minutes for discussion. Um, so I can just start with a question while everyone else is uh, typing. So you have this very nice uh, treatment of the finite um, energy stabilizers. And GKP states are also nicely connected to like the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Can your method kind of also elegantly relate to like, yeah, to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, 
still for like finite states? Um, yes, good question. Um, so I mean, yeah, it relates to the fact that here, since it's squeeze states, it's clear that uh, these uh, the width here, the squeezing can decrease as you uh, increase the size of the GKP. And um, since, yeah, yeah, looking at this operator, uh, yeah, looking at these two operators, it's not clear that they commute. But since they come from the this finite energy stabilizer, uh, in fact, uh, they do commute. Um, and so you can find an eigenstate of both these things. And so you can reduce the amplitude in both quadratures. And that's how it relates to Heisenberg uncertainty principle. I'm not sure if I <laughs> answered your question. Um, I, I, I think a little bit, but, but I probably need a piece of paper to think through myself. But uh, thanks uh, a lot. Um, Uh, so, Josh is now asking what happens if the bus is slightly thermal? Will this affect the protocol? Um, and no. So, yeah, good question. So, the thermal bat here would be uh, equivalent to a measurement, um, measurement and preparation errors in the qubit. So, um, in the protocol, uh, and in this picture here, we imagine that all the qubits are in G and thermal bat would be some qubits uh, and the qubits are written in E with some probability. And in practice, in this protocol, this is equivalent to having a uh, preparation error on the, uh, the um, qubit. And in fact, preparation error here, we need, um, if we look at the protocol, the qubits are act act actually prepared in plus, and this is just, we need to rotate the, 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 the qubit blocks here. So preparing in minus would be a preparation error. And this is equivalent to a phase error. And so the plot of the, so we showed that the GKP, uh, the protocol is very robust against dephasing. And this shows also that it's robust against measurement uh, preparation errors, which are equivalent to uh, temperature. And yeah, we, I, um, in the end of the uh, supplemental material, we have an expression of how to relate the preparation error to some actual temperature of the bat. Um, but yeah, we can. Uh, so does this mean it doesn't even slow down the stabilization or is it slowing down the stabilization? Uh, yes, it slows down the stabilization. So instead of having nice uh, peaks, you have like small displacements uh, around and you have some mixture of displacements. It won't slow down. You'll have some thermal population. Uh, uh, yeah, of the state. So a small displacement around the, the, the center. OK, uh, th thanks for describing. We got a few more questions. So um, how do we imagine doing two qubit gates while protecting? Um, so here, the protection is uh, is discrete, right? It's discrete circuits. So um, here, it, you'd have to turn down, just interleave the like stabilization, and then uh, doing two qubit gate. Um, in fact, you cannot do a two qubit while you do the circuit because you have to do some tricks to approximate this uh, modularity. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that answered the question. You have to interleave the two qubit gate and the stabilization circuit. And so I, I think that's like half the second question of the of it, of the same person is exactly about can you do um, a continuous version of the stabilization rather than uh, this stepwise version? Um, maybe I mean you need to couple to this modular variable, which is really the tricky thing, um, and so you could. And like exactly this, I don't think so, but you could, you can write this modular variable as a Fourier series, so as a sum of uh, sine functions. And so you could imagine with Josephson junction uh, coupling to the sine of some quadrature, 
are some more complicated thing. Uh, I, I haven't figured out how to do it. Yeah. There's ID, I'm all more than welcome to hear about them. Um, uh, yeah, as an experimentalist, also stepwise has some advantages to calibrate, maybe. But um, I think so. Unfortunately, there are more questions in the chat, but I think we should move on to the next speaker. So, everyone, please uh, continue the discussion in the Slack channel. Um, and 